welcome back. We're working on a base today. I think I made this base 12 years ago, 15 years ago, I guess. I don't really even remember. It's been a long time. The owner of this thing has recently fallen in love with short scale bases. And so I think the project today on this thing is to take this from a 34 inch scale base and make a conversion neck for it and bring it down to a 30 inch scale. I've got this nice figured piece of maple right here, which is gonna make a beautiful fretboard for it. So yeah, let's see if we can knock out a 30 inch scale conversion neck for this thing and get this thing back on the road. As it sits, this fretboard is roughly 10 milliliters thick and it needs to be about two thirds that thickness. After a quick meet up with the bandsaw, and a thrash through the planer to remove a cord of material, it's spot on. I'm getting this metric system dialed. With that all sorted, we can find the best looking part of the board and cut it to length. There are actually no parts of this board that didn't look good, so that job was easy. Make one side perfectly flat for measuring and layout. Check for square. When all that's complete, we have a fretboard blank that's, well, blank. Now for the tricky bit. In most cases, I would build the structure of the neck first and add the fretboard on top of that. In this case, I don't know exactly how this conversion neck will fit the body we have, so it's easier to build the fretboard first, figure out where it sits on the body in relationship to the bridge, and then add the neck underneath. Oddly, Stumac says they are sold out of fret slot templates for converting a 12-year-old 92 bass guitar from a 34-inch scale to a 30-inch scale, so I have to do this one the old-fashioned way with maths and measuring tools and pencils and saws, razor blades, maybe some tape, and probably more than a few cups of coffee. This takes a considerable amount of time and requires extreme precision. If you measure or mark or cut a fret wrong, then all the others after that one are also wrong. Unless you're lucky enough to measure the very next one wrong in the opposite direction and get back on track. I think since bass players can be easily confused at times, let's not make two frets in the middle of the neck out of tune if possible. Anyway, there are dozens of these measurements, so let's move on. Okay, with the fretboard laid out, that's pretty nice. It ends up being I'm probably going to cut it off at the 20th fret, so it'll only be a 19th fret. When you do these conversion necks, you kind of aren't really sure how many frets you're going to have until you lay it out and then lay it on the guitar and see where everything fits up and how it fits the neck pocket and all that. So this is going to end up being a 19th fret base now. Probably the 20th fret will be the end. Because now that that's laid out, it's time to start working on the actual neck piece. I'm probably going to do a laminate, probably some mahogany and some stripes in here. Yeah, that's what we're doing right now. We're going to rip this thing down into a three quarter inch, a little over three quarter inch thick slab for this neck, and we'll move on from there. Okay, bandsaw, planer. You guys know the drill. That tidies this neck blank up to roughly two liter meters or three centipedes. All right, it's time to tear this thing down and start laying out the new neck. Okay, we're roughly something like that. That's not gonna, that's not permanent. I just wanted a reference. Okay, that's going to make up our neck blank. So we got maple, mahogany, maple, mahogany, maple. So a five piece laminate. Let's get some glue on this thing and get her all glued up and then we'll clean it up and this thing's going to come together fast. I call this glue glubrication because it makes the individual pieces so slippery until clamped. With all the glubrication involved on a five piece glue up, it can be like herding cats on a hot tin roof until it's clamped up tight.
Okay, I think we got our layout done. So it's pretty much that. Oh, this neck blank cleaned up really nice. Like that was a nice glue up. So if you put the heel down there, that's a heck of a lot shorter. Super cool conversion. Okay, I think the next is to get a truss rod slot in this thing before I taper these sides and cut this out. Okay, that took multiple passes, but due to budget cuts, I can't really show you all that. Okay, there's the difference in them. That's the conversion neck going on. So it's pretty well roughed out. I'm gonna leave it there for tonight. I'm gonna just let this thing move and twist. If it's got any kind of twist or any kind of movement in it, I want that to happen over the next couple days so that I can true it all up and make sure it's done moving. And then we can move on to thicknessing this thing and gluing the fretboard on and all the different things that happen after we do the stuff to the thing, we'll do more things to the stuff, so. Okay, serious question for you guys. This drill press needs a new chuck. I don't even have a key that fits it. It's such a big chuck that I've never been able to buy a key that fits it. How do you even get them off? Are they just pressed on? How do you press them off? How do you press them on? And where do I buy these big old chucks? I, I really would like to replace this thing, but I've yet to find a chuck that I could buy to put on there. If you just drill them halfway on the front side and then flip it over to the back side and drill the rest of the way, you'll never have any tear out. You won't risk any kind of damage. That's why I drilled a little hole first so that I can chase it from both sides. The cool part is it makes these little donut things inside. That's pretty cool. Okay, that went perfect. It's time to trim this fretboard down into its final shape, which means it's the last time it's gonna have edges that are square to the center line. So if there's anything that needs to be marked, measured, adjusted, laid out, now's the time to do it. Also, this is the first time the camera has been able to capture how beautiful this fretboard is going to be. While we wait for the bandsaw scene to finish, let's talk fret markers. The original neck had fret markers like this and this. I want to retain that look because I think the owner really likes these. I did those cutouts on a table saw in my youth and all I remember about it is that it was complicated and hard and complicated. So I'm laying this out here to do on the bandsaw which will likely trigger another bandsaw scene. And here it is. Lovely. I was a little bit nervous about working around this 12th fret now. The original layout didn't have two markers on the 12th fret, it only had one. But I think having two markers on the 12th fret is going to be a nice feature. The problem is it leaves that thin strip in the middle and I was worried that I would break that thing out. And if I did that, it was time to start over on this fretboard and repeat all these steps we've done up until now. So I'm working gingerly around that 12th fret, trying not to force anything and not break that little tab off. like flossing your teeth. Well, I made a giant mess out of that fretboard, but that's going to come out good later. I don't know why I cut those pieces so long. It's time to ceremonially join fretboard and neck. 
a bit of lubrication, place it in the jig. I fretboard take your neck for better or worse in good playing and bad, in tune, out of tune, forever so shall be. Truth be told, management only approved the purchase of 18 of those red clamps, which is fine for a 25 and a half inch scale neck. Not so much for a 30 inch scale neck. I had to resort to the time honored tradition of screwing clamps onto the neck past the 17th fret. Okay, we got the conversion neck out of the little fretboard press glue jig thing. I really like it when that just comes out really awesome. That's kind of cool. I, I, like the, I like the two on the 12th better than just having the one like this one had. I'm just noticing we really didn't lose any frets because there's 19 and 20. I got 19 and 20. Oh, hold on a second. Let me grab the body. I want to show you something. Okay, I've got it resting inside the body and I think I'm going to leave this um, fretboard extension hanging over because it sort of, it well, it doesn't just sort of, it really does hide the access for the truss rod, which didn't look that great anyway. I don't know, I kind of like it hanging over like that. It just has a nice clean look. The other thing I'm really happy about, look how good this neck's fitting, this neck pocket. It's just fantastic. So I think now it's time to radius the fretboard and fret this thing. What's next? We got fretboards radius. We got the slots to the right depth. So now we could either trim down this headstock and shape that curve and get the thing for the nut in there. Or we could just go ahead and shape this thing, flip it over and just start working on shaping it. I don't know. What do I feel like? I probably feel like probably doing this. So we'll probably do this next. Just talk amongst yourselves while I cut two yards of material off of this headstock. Okay, I'm just laying out what holds the nut in here so I can make the nut slot. And I want to make the back side of the nut slot match this mahogany that's in the fret marker and the mahogany in the stripes. This is the strip that will make up the back side of the nut slot. And what I've found in the past is that one of these, you know, screw tips, one of these screw tips is exactly the size of a base nut that I like. So I just use that for a spacer off the end of the fretboard and I'm going to glue that on there like that then that will all get curved and shaped into this, you know, this plane. Here we go. While the glue dries on that, I think we can kill one bird with three stones here and get the fret wire at least cut down to size. Start sanding to a higher grid on the fretboard. We're trying to work our way towards 400 grit here so that the flamey figuring in this maple just really shines. Sometimes I can be obsessive about checking the depths of these fret slots, but if you've ever had a fret bottom out in the slot, you'll know how annoying that can be, so to me it's worth all the triple checking. Apparently I wasn't happy with a couple of these since I see the saw getting some action. Glue is dry. I can finally start to rough end the curve at the end of the fretboard. With that bit of sanding completed, we can move on to more sanding. Let's start whittling away at this neck carve. I bet the image people have in their heads of traditional luthiers is like an old guy with little glasses and an apron and sensible shoes using ancient tools like spoke shaves and chisels and wooden wood planes and just sitting in a crowded shop with like the yellow lighting making wood shavings thin enough to see through all day. I mean, me, I prefer an angle grinder with a 36 grit disc. Sensible shoes might be nice though. It looks like it was attacked by a pack of angry badgers outside the recovering Woodaholics Anonymous meeting. Oh, that's more like it. What are we playing, Candy Crush? Focus. Oh, this is better. This almost looks like a scene you would see in a real Luthier's video. Great! Time to check if it matches. Well, does it? Oh, guess not. 
Have you guys noticed, sometimes I press frets in, sometimes I use a dead blow hammer, sometimes a ball peen hammer, or, or even a rubber mallet if I'm in the mood. Okay, this neck's turning out awesome. Every time I make a neck, I think, oh, that's the best neck I've ever made. It's my favorite one yet. But I say that every time, so <laughs> this one's no exception. This is gonna be the first one that gets the rebranded logo. I don't have a template to route that yet, so I'm gonna have to freehand it. Wish me luck. Hopefully I'm not making a new neck here in about 15, 20 minutes. bad. Okay, let's see how the numbers fit in there. Okay, let's put some tint on just the face of this and see how we like it and, and see how close we are to feeling like this is about done. Who knows, it may just get sanded back off, but right now I just want to tint this real quick and see what I think, and then we'll go from there. This is my super secret Eye of Newt, Baguana, Fairy Dust, and Dinosaur Egg Whites, which looks fantastic on Maple Necks. This is just a water-based tint. It gives a nice base color. Apparently I was happy enough with it to move on to doing the entire neck. Okay, I think I'm up to about six coats of oil on this thing at this point, and I'm pretty happy with it. It's looking really, really nice. I think I'm going to get a couple more coats of oil on it and then kind of buff it out a little bit, and this thing is going to be pretty much a wrap. We'll put it back on this base and see if it plays in tune and make sure everything's good, and we're done. Oh, can't forget the last of the fretwork here. Leveling, crowning, polishing, polishing, polishing. player I am not. <laughs> hey, that was a fun episode. That thing turned out really, really good. It plays in tune. It plays perfectly. It, it plays great. Um, it's kind of fun to play. It's more like a baritone guitar than it is a big long bass. It's it's fun. It's just cool. Um, yeah, fun project. If you guys need something like that done, you know, a conversion neck for your instrument or a baritone for your telly or resonator or whatever, hit me up with an email. It's in the about section of my YouTube page. You can find my email address. Hit me up and we'll see what we can do. That was super fun. Thanks you guys for watching. Really appreciate it. Who plays bass through a five watt guitar tube amp anyway?